Hello, welcome to my new video. So in the previous videos, we covered everything about the AI center. And in those, we just covered about the AI center packages, pipelines, skills, and several other information that you need to know for your certification. So right now, we are going to focus a bit on the document understanding side. Since we covered the AI Center, let's see what else we can learn um, from the document understandings and see how all these products can link together. So in, in this video, we will be looking into what are the products that are going to work together in the UiPath platform to make, to get document understanding to work. So as you know, in the UiPath platform, there are several products, AI Center, Studio, Orchestrator, and so on. So what you see on the screen are the products that we have in UiPath for different reasons. So for discovery, we have these products. For automation, we have these products. And for operation side of things, we have these products. So out of this, what are going to be used for document understanding and how these things connect to each other. That's what we are going to look into. So to start with, all of these things can start with the studio. So when it comes to the studio, this is where we developers create our automation solutions. So same applies to document understanding as well. So when it comes to document understanding, creating those workflows, or using the document understanding template that is available under templates. All of these things can be done through the studio. And when you start creating the workflow, it covers several things. First thing is creating the taxonomy. And so basically the taxonomy is basically says the board that these are the documents that you are going to process and these are the fields of each document. The next one is the OCR. And the other one is the classifiers. So the classifier will tell the bot that what kind of a document that is. Once you're done with the classification, you can also configure the human in the loop activities. In addition to that, you can use the retraining capabilities and the data extraction capabilities to train your classifiers and the extractors to make sure it improves over time. All of these things actually connect with the steps that are used for document processing. So if we go back here, one step up in the learning course of the UiPath Document Understanding Overview, here we are talking about the different steps involved in a normal document understanding framework. This includes the digitization, classification, extraction, validation, and human in the loop. All of these steps are covered in the studio workflow. So that is why the studio is important. And uh, when you're creating the workflows, or you will be covering all of these steps. So all these steps are mandatory in a normal document understanding workflow. However, there is one option that is one step that is optional, which is the classification. So as I mentioned before, the classification mostly focus on telling you what kind of a document that you're processing, whether it's an invoice, purchase order, or a contract, or anything else. But there can be scenarios where this classification is not mandatory. So let's say you have a workflow that uh, only process invoices. In that case, we know that you will only get invoices. So in such a case, we can actually keep the classification step optional in your workflow. But in a scenario where you get multiple document types and you need to always verify what document that is, then the classification step is mandatory. So always remember, there's one step that is always optional. That is the classification 
out of these steps. So now let's get back to the products. So now we talked about the studio. So the first product is that one. Now whatever you create in the studio, these things should run somehow. So how can you run a solution that you create in studio? That's where the uh, robots come in. And in a UiPath environment, you can have two different types of robots. One is the cloud robots, or the other one is the on-prem robot. So document understanding supports both cloud and the on-premise. In that case, we have both of these robots types available. So whether it's the cloud or the on-prem, those bots will be able to execute the code that you create in the studio. So some of the steps that they do will be retrieving the files, digitizing them using the OCR and classification, data extraction, validation steps as we discussed earlier, and lastly, sending that extra information to AI Center or the other retraining methods. So now you can also see that AI Center is also related or, the, or linked here. Let's get to AI Center in a short while, but you can see how the products are connecting to each other. So now let's see the AI Center. In AI Center, we, as we discussed earlier, it's a place where you can use or create AI models to perform various activities, not just document understanding, but it is it has models to perform different uh, activities. Out of that, document understanding is also one. So you can use AI Center to create um, the models that you want to process different documents and host it there as a skill. And you can use that skill in your studio workflow to extract the data. Additionally, you can also use the manually verified data through the workflow and using those retraining activities we talked about. You can send that data back to AI Center to make sure your model learns as we go. So that's <clears throat> AI Center. It can basically help you in classification and extraction. Then you have another one is the Action Center. So when I was explaining the AI Center, I mentioned about human validation. Whenever you have a document that needs to be verified by someone, the extracted data or the classification, that can be sent to Action Center. So Action Center is more like a platform where you can see the assigned activities to different users or the unassigned activities. And uh, if it's a document validation activity, once you open the action or the task, you can see the document and the extracted data. So the user can manually verify and correct if something is wrong and submit it back. That information will again go back to the workflow that you created during execution and it will use that data to train your model. Basically passing that data to AI Center to improve. So action is more of a place where the people can interact with the bot for your document understanding activity. Then here you have something called document understanding. So this is actually a separate service that is available. So let me show you quickly. So over here, if you click on these three dots, we have this document understanding. So this is a document understanding service that is offered by UiPath. And using this document understanding service, you can create your extractors, you can create your classifiers very easily with a simple set of clicks and labeling if required. You can learn more about this. I have separate videos on these things, so I have the links 
everything mentioned in the description part. You can follow those videos to learn more on how to use this. Anyway, we will also be covering some of these steps as a part of this series as we go. So this is the document understanding service. So using that, you can actually create um, the classifiers and extractors easily to support your document understanding activities. And this is also available in UiPath Automation Suite and the cloud. So both options are available. So that, those are the products that we need from the automate category. And then we are coming into the operate part. Here we have two. So basically, the one of the most important thing is the orchestrator. So we talked about the studio, we talked about AI center and the bots. So all of these things that we create in studio, that we execute the machine learning models, all of these things are controlled and managed by the orchestrator. Even the workflow that you create, you will ultimately end up publishing that to orchestrator so that you can run it according to different schedules and so on. So orchestrator plays a major role in this document understanding as usual. So where does all of these products stand? So I mentioned we have the option to do this on the cloud or on-premise. So in that case, we also have the option here. We have the automation cloud and the automation suite. So all of these things, either one of these things will support you in your projects. And either one of those will actually include the other products like the studio, um, action center, AI center, and so on. Everything will be a part of the entire uh, suit or the cloud. So that's, these are the products that we need for document understanding. So it's important to remember these things and to make sure that you answer those questions if you get anything related to this correctly. I also found an interesting question from the practice exam that refers to some of these products. I took a screenshot of this. So this is the question. What is the relation of UiPath Orchestrator and UiPath Action Center to human validation steps for document understanding? So now you can see how uh, the questions are also structured related to these uh, products. So again, let's see what the question is. So it's asking the relationship of orchestrator and the action center to human validation steps. So now you know what each product does. So let's see the options we have here. UiPath orchestrator and UiPath actions are two different products that serve distinct purposes in the UiPath ecosystem. While the orchestrator is used for managing and orchestrating the robots, Action Center is a low-code development platform that enables the creation of custom actions. Um, both have specific features for configuring human validation steps. So in this case, this orchestrating part, the orchestrator, the definition for the orchestrator looks fine, but Action Center is not a low-code development platform. That's not the purpose of Action Center, as we discussed. So let's see the other option. UiPath Orchestrator provides centralized control and monitoring of robots, but it does not have direct functionality for configuring human validation steps. Okay. Action Center is an R3 development platform that does not have built-in capabilities for human validation. So this is also not Correct, we can leave it for now. UiPath Orchestrator and the, and the UiPath Actions can be used together to configure human validation steps by creating a workflow that includes the validation task visible in Action Center, assigning to a human worker, and tracking the progress and results in Orchestrator. Orchestrator is used to schedule and manage boards, while Action Center is a separate product that focus on 
integrating external systems. They cannot be used together for human validation steps for orchestrator, for document understanding. So what do you think the correct answer is? Let's take a moment and see which one is the correct one. You can also think. So if you really think, um, first one is not the answer anyway, because Action Center is not a local development platform that enables custom actions or automation, right? Action Center is a separate product where you can assign the actions to a user and the user can from there verify those things. So the second one, uh, the orchestrator provides centralized control, which is fine, but Action Center is a RPA development platform according to the second option and does not have built-in capabilities for human validation. So this is also not a RPA development platform and it does have capabilities for human validation. This is also not the correct answer. Third one, Action Center and Orchestrator can be used together to configure human validation steps by creating a workflow that includes validation tasks and the users can verify and the progress can be tracked from the orchestrator. So in the ideal scenario for out of these four options, third one is the correct. So even if you look at the fourth one, orchestrator is used to schedule and manage the bots, while Action Center is a separate product that focuses on ex integrating external systems. So this is also not the correct one. They can be used together to perform the human validation. So third one is the correct one out of these four. So that covers our topic around what are the products that are used to do document understanding. So I hope this video is helpful. If you have any questions, please mention it in the comment section or you can reach out to me directly on social media. So thank you for listening and I'll see you in another video that again relates to document understanding. Thank you so much for listening and have a nice day.